Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. In this series of episodes, I am trying to build out a image that shows the world uh, colored by the degree of drought being experienced at that latitude and longitude. This is gonna take a number of steps. In the last episode, I showed you how I go about organizing a project directory, how I connect that with GitHub, and then how I keep track of my software dependencies using a tool called Conda, along with a companion tool called Mamba. In this episode, we're going to get the data that we are going to be analyzing with our project. And while we've certainly seen in previous episodes how we can kind of do this uh, at the, the, using uh, the browser as well as using R, in today's episode, we're gonna use a different tool called wget, and we're gonna write a bash script using wget to download the files we want. And we're gonna do that, like I said, using bash scripts to make it all automated so that it runs directly from the command line without having to go into R or use any other tool like a browser. I'm over in Chrome. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new tab. I'll do a search for NOAA GHCN. Um, and so we'll see what that gets us here. And so that gets us a variety of different things. So Global Historic uh, Climatology Network, that's GHCN, uh, the daily. Um, and there's a variety of different files and I'm pretty sure that we actually don't want the top one. We want this third one. This brings us uh, to the daily summaries page. And so we want the daily data, right? We don't want it aggregated. And so as you can kind of scroll down through here, you see there's a variety of different uh, types of data available to us. I want um, the NCEI direct download. This brings us to a web page that um, looks very low frills, right? And so we can see there's all sorts of different links in here. And if I scroll down here, there's a readme.txt file. Need to maybe zoom out a little bit, all right? And so you can see that um, it tells you information about how to cite uh, this information and then the download quick start. So what do you want to know, right? And so start by downloading ghcndstations.txt. So we'll remember that, which has the metadata for all stations. It doesn't have the actual data, but the metadata for each of the stations and including like what, where the station is, right? The latitude, longitude of each station, um, maybe information about where it is. And then we want to download one of the following tar files, right? So there's ghcnd all, ghcnd gsn, GHCND HCN, right? And so if we want all of the data, we want this all.tar.gz file, right? And so we can then uncompress and untar the contents uh, to get like 100,000 different files um, to, to get all of the daily weather data for each of those weather stations, right? And so if you come down here, you'll see that the all is a directory with .dly files uh, which are the files for all of GHCN daily, right? And so that's again, what is in uh, this GHCND all tar.gz file. It is the compressed version of the all directory, right? And so we see that down here, right? So uh, the all tar is the tar file, the gzip compressed files in the all directory. Yeah, so here now I see GHCND all tar.gz. That's 3.3 gigabytes. It is big. Um, that's what we want because that has all of the data that was in the all directory, right? Okay, so I'm going to come back to my Visual Studio code and inside of code, I am going to make a new file. And so I will then call this get ghcnd all dot bash. And so now this is a bash script. And so at the top of this bash script, I need to indicate uh, to bash that this is a bash script so that we'll then know that all of the commands that follow are bash commands, kind of like what I might run down here at the dollar sign here uh, in my drought index directory. So the first line is the shebang line that starts with pound exclamation point. This tells bash or the interpreter that's running the command line what types of commands are gonna follow in this script, right? So I'll do forward slash USR bin ENV space bash. And so again, that tells uh, bash, my command line inter interpreter, what types of commands are about to follow, right? So what I could do would be to say LS, right? So I'll go ahead and save that. So down here at my dollar sign, I could type bash and then code forward slash get ghcnd all bash. 
And so that is then running the ls command, right? And so that is running uh, that command, much like if I were to run it down here, right? So if I were to type ls here, I'd get the same thing, okay? So um, this is kind of a silly script, but I'm using it to illustrate a couple things. I don't really need to say bash and then the name of the bash script because I can make this bash script an executable, right? So if I do ls-lth on code, I can then see that get ghcnd all bash is read writable, right? So it's readable and writable, um, but it's not executable, right? So I can make it executable by doing ch mod plus x on code forward slash get ghcnd all bash. And now if I rerun ls lth, I now see these x in here, which indicates that get ghcnd is executable, right? So now I can do code forward slash get ghcnd all bash, run that, and it runs that ls command without me having to say uh, the type of software that needs to run the script, right? Because it's gonna grab that from the shebang line, all right? So again, I'm sorry that's, if that's a little bit long-winded, but that is a way that we can get an executable script. Now, what this allows us to do is we can put any commands in here that we want to be able to run from the command line, but that we don't wanna have to manually type out each time. So we'll come back here, and I'm gonna get the link to ghcndaltar.gz. So I'll right click and then get copy link address. And now what I could do would be to do wget on uh, that link, right? And so one thing to know is that wget doesn't come with a Mac by default. <sighs> Who knows? Um, and so what I could do instead is I can add wget to my conda environment, right? So I need to make sure that I'm in my conda environment. So I can do conda env list. I'm in my, my base, right? So I need to do conda activate drought. So I'll come over to my browser and do wget on conda. And what I will see um, is that there is a conda forge version of the wget package. So wget 120.3. And so what I can do is I can come back over here and I'll do mamba install hyphen C conda forge. And then I'll do wget and equals 1.20.3. Double check that number. Yep, 120.3. Um, and we'll go ahead and run that. Very good, that all installed. And so now I can do wget hyphen hyphen version. And I should see 1.20.3. Uh, let's see, um, yeah. Uh, wget 120.3. So I'm going to actually go ahead and come back up to the previous command and I want wget 120.3 and I will then add that to my environment as a dependency. So wget 120.3, I can save that. I'm not going to burn down and then rebuild the environment right now. Um, I think this is a pretty small minor addition. Uh, maybe before I finish the whole package, I will burn down the environment and recreate it again. Uh, when I say burn down, what I mean is delete and then re recreate, right? Okay, so I can now go ahead and close that environment. And so now I have wget accessible to me to go ahead and download this uh, targz file. So I would like to though have it be moved into a specific directory. So to put it in a specific directory, I can use hyphen p uh, and I want it to go then into data. Okay, so we'll go ahead and save that. And we'll then go ahead and uh, let's get a fresh line here on a terminal. And like I showed you before, we could then do code uh, get ghcnd all bash. And now it is downloading. And this is going to take about 30 minutes to download as it shows on my internet. I guess it's getting a little bit faster as it goes here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up another bash shell here. So let's go ahead and make a new one with the plus sign. And so now if I look at ls data, I see that ghcnd alt.tar.gz there, and I do ls-lth, right? And so now I see that uh, as it kind of uh, run that command multiple times, it is getting bigger and it is going into the right location. If I do get status, I see that I don't get the data forward slash um, ghcnd alt.tar.gz. And that's again, because in the previous episode, I added to my .gitignore file, the data directory, right? So we don't want to be putting a gigantic file like this 
up into GitHub. And so again, that's the reason we added that to .gitignore. And again, this is running to go ahead and download this uh, file, the ghcnd altar gz into my data directory. Very good. So that's running and I can come back to that by going over here and we still have about 11 minutes to go. Initially it says it's gonna take a really long time and then it kind of speeds up once it figures out how fast my internet connection is. So this is clearly not something I wanna be doing a whole bunch of times, which is why I have a single script to do this, right? Um, I can download this file whenever I want a new version of it without having to basically add all of my code to a single script where I'm downloading it and processing it because that would just be painful to make you know subtle changes to the analysis if I had to download it over and over again, right? So again, this script will be really helpful because you can imagine rerunning the script every day to get a fresh version of the data. I'm going to now repeat this to get the other files that they suggested we get. Again, if I come back, um, I find the ghcnd stations and ghcnd inventory files, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and create new bash scripts for those. And one of the nice things again about being uh, here in uh, Visual Studio Code is that I can have multiple terminals open at the same time. So I'm gonna go ahead and create another bash script, which I'll call get ghcnd stations dot bash. And I will again copy over this shebang line. Again, we'll do wget hyphen p into data. And I'm now going to grab that link um, of the stations, right? The stations.txt. So I'll go ahead and copy that link address. And then I will put that in there and save that. And we'll go ahead and do our ch mod to make it executable because if I do ls lth on code, I now see that I've got that new bash script, but it's not executable, right? So again, I'll do ch mod plus x get um, or I need to do code forward slash get ghcnd stations dot bash. Now again, if I do lslth on code, I see that it is executable and we can then go ahead and do code forward slash get all that stations dot bash and it's downloading, right? And so this is gonna take a couple minutes to download. Uh, it's not gigantic, but it is still about 10 megabytes. Now I wanna also get the inventory file, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and create another code uh, which will be get ghcnd inventory dot r and again i'm going to basically copy this script over and replace this stations with inventory dot txt so we'll go ahead and save this as get uh, ghcnd inventory dot r ah i don't mean r i mean bash right so i need to go ahead and rename that um, and so i can come over here click on that in the find in the explorer click rename and then make this bash and save that and so now that's our bash file and i can go ahead then and do ch mod plus x on code uh, ghcnd inventory bash great and again i can run that uh, to get the inventory data very good, so that downloaded. And again, I can look in my data directory. I'll do lslth on data. So I see that I've got the all file, the inventory and the stations, right? Those are stored in the data directory. And again, just to prove it to myself, if I do get status, I don't see anything from the data directory uh, showing up as not being tracked or needing to be committed. Great. So again, we have these three bash scripts. I'm still waiting on the all one to finish downloading. It looks like it might be another five minutes. So I'll go ahead and do some editing and we'll check back in with you in about five minutes. So it took about 12 minutes to download on my home internet, which is not super fast, uh, but certainly not something I wanna be doing many, many times. As I was waiting for that to run, I was looking back at my three scripts here and I realized that there's really only one difference <laughs> between these three scripts. And that's the name of the file that I'm trying to download from the daily directory, right? So I think what I'll do is instead of having these three different scripts, so I'll have a single script and I can then call each of the three scripts by giving it the name of the file I want. So I'm gonna make a couple new uh, files here. And so the first will be get uh, gh uh, cnd data dot bash. And I'll go ahead and grab all this 
and plop that into here and save that. And I can create a variable that I'll call file and I'll say that equals to dollar sign one. And so dollar sign one means use the first argument after the name of the script from the command line, right? And so then in here, what I can do is I can plop in, uh, in curly braces, dollar sign file, and I'll save that. And so now what I can do is I can, I can make it executable. So I can do chmod plus x code ghcnd data dot bash. And then what I could do would be to do code get ghcnd data dot bash. And then the file that I want to give it would be say this inventory file, right? And so now if I do that, I'm complaining uh, that this was basically the URL it's trying to get and it's got this uh, percent seven around it. And so I think it doesn't like my curly braces. So let's go ahead and put, uh, just leave it alone and we'll try that again. And so now that worked, right? So I thought I needed the curly braces, but I don't actually need the curly braces. Um, and so we now have the ghcnd inventory.txt. It downloaded it. And so what you see now is that it saves it to ghcnd inventory.txt.1, right? And so if I look at lslth data, I now see I've got ghcnd inventory.txt and .txt.1. And so I think I'd like to do is if that file already exists, I wanna go ahead and remove it, right? So I'll then go and do rm dollar sign file to clean this up a little bit. I'll go ahead and remove that gncnd inventory text one. So I'll do data, uh, like I said, inventory uh, dot one. All right, so let's try running this again. So in my rm, it's complaining that no such file or directory, and that's because file, it should be in data, right? So we'll go ahead and try that again. Ah. Uh, and again, this is why we practice this with smaller files rather than the big files, because the big files will take a long time to run. All right, so we'll go ahead and run that again. And so we don't see any error messages up here for the RM, and we see that it's now downloading it to ghcnd inventory.txt in data. So now if I do lslth on data, I see that I've got the inventory. Let's go ahead and rerun that then with ghcnd stations, right? So we'll remove that inventory and do stations txt um, we get the stations no error with the rm and that worked great so i'm going to create a new script that i will call driver.bash and so this driver.bash is going to uh, be the driver right it's going to call all of my scripts so i'm going to go ahead and give this the shebang line right and we'll plop that at the top of driver and so then we can do code forward slash get underscore um, ghcnd uh, data dot bash. And now I can put in the all, uh, the inventory and the stations, right? And so I'll come back to drivers. So that will run that to download that. Um, and so let me go ahead and grab this. All right, and so now I wanna put in the ghcnd uh, hyphen inventory dot txt, I'm pretty sure it was, right, that txt. And then we also want the stations, uh, right, that's also a txt file, right? And so we can put that there. So again, I'll do a chmod plus x on my driver dot bash. I can then do period forward slash driver dot bash to run that. That means look for driver bash in the current directory. So while that's all running, I'm going to go ahead and open up another uh, bash script and I'm going to go ahead and just in case go ahead and activate uh, my drought uh, environment and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those extra ghcnd scripts so I'll go ahead and do rm code uh, get ghcnd stations inventory and then all and now if I look at get status, I see that I've modified the environment file. I've got this general get ghcnd data dot bash script as well as my driver bash. All right, so that all ran through. Uh, again, if we look at ls lth on data, uh, we see that we have those three ghcnd files.
So to try to help motivate something for the next episode, what I'd like to do is one more step, and that will be to get a listing of all of the files in this ghcnd all tar gz file, okay? And so again, this, this file is a tar gz, which means it's compressed. And what is compressed? Well, what's compressed is a tar file. And a tar file is a bunch of files all stuck together. If you think about tar, if you were covered in tar, you're gonna to stick to a bunch of other stuff, right? Perhaps you've heard of people being tarred and feathered a few hundred years ago, pretty atrocious, but things stuck together, right? And so you take a bunch of files, you stick them together, and then you compress them, right? So that's a tar gz file. You can uh, use the tar function to figure out what is in there, right? So we can do tar uh, tvf on data, and then ghcnd all tar gz, running this, will then output the listing of all of the files as well as um, their, when they were made, their size, all sorts of other good stuff like that, right? So I had run tar tvf. That v is for verbose. That t is listing out the files that are in there, right? So if I do tar tf on uh, the data, ghcnd, all, right? I then get a listing of the directory and the name of the file in there, right? So what I'd like to do is take that command and I want to redirect the output to a special file, okay? So I'm gonna come back up here to code. I'm gonna create a new uh, bash script that I'll call get ghcnd all files.bash. And again, we will grab the shebang line and plop that at the top here. And I'm going to grab this tar command and paste that in, right? So there's no need to retype everything when uh, control C, command V uh, are your friends to copy and paste, right? And so now I can output this to a data uh, file. So I'll do data forward slash ghcnd all files dot txt. And we'll go ahead and save that. And now what I can do is again, chmod it. Uh, to make that executable on uh, code get ghcnd all files dot bash. And now I can again do uh, run all this, right? So I go ahead and copy and paste this down. So while that's running, I'm gonna go ahead and add that to the driver, right? And so this now will get out uh, the names of all the files that are in the archive, right? And so maybe what I'll do to organize this a little bit better uh, will be to make it like this, right? And so I can put in comments. So I could say get um, all of the daily data uh, from all weather stations and generate list of uh, stations, right? And then here I can add another comment to say get listing of um, types of data found at each weather station. Right, and then this third one, um, I can say get metadata for each weather station. Okay, cool. So now we have comments, we have the code, and we're in good shape. Um, again, uh, this finished running, so I can now look at the output file. So I'll then do head uh, data forward slash ghcnd all uh, files dot text, and I now see uh, that we've got um, an empty directory, and then I have all the DLY files, right? So maybe what I'd like to do is modify this to only return those lines that have .dly. And so we can do that very straightforward uh, by piping this. Uh, and so we've talked about pipes in R. Well, we can also do pipes in uh, bash, right? And so the pipe here is a vertical line, and I can do grep, and then I can do uh, in quotes the pattern that I want to match. And so I'll do uh, period DLY, and, and then we'll redirect that output to this, uh, this file here, right? The data ghcnd cnd all files.txt, and that should get rid of that uh, empty directory, right? So I'll go ahead and save that, and now rerun this, right? So we'll go ahead and do another head on that. And now we see that empty directory or the directory ghcnd all that we had here is gone and it picks right up with the DLY. I could also do WCL uh, to figure out how many lines are in the file. 
uh, GHCND all files. And that there's 122,010 files in that compressed archive, right? So there's a lot there, right? Uh, maybe one thing I'll do to give it a column name uh, would be to give it, to do echo, and I'll say echo uh, file name, and then I'll output that name, file name, to this text file, right? So I'll go ahead and copy that up here. And so the single greater than sign will create and write to that file, right? And so basically, if we run these two lines, then we're only gonna get what we had here, right? Because it'll write file name, that word, to the file, the text file. But then in the next line, it'll create a new file and write it again, right? And so we'll lose that. So if we want to append, then we need to do two greater than signs, okay? So we'll go ahead and run this, and then I'll rerun our code. Let's go ahead and do another head on this. And we now see that at the top, we have a column called file name. Of course, this is a file with one column, but hey, um, you can perhaps see down the road where this might be useful uh, as a tibble, right? And having a column name for that tibble, right? So we're trying to help future us uh, out a little bit as we engineer the output of these files. So where are we now? Well, we have three new bash scripts as a result of this episode. We have a script that will download data from the GHCN website. We have a file or a script that will extract the names of all the files in one of those archives. It's not decompressing or unpackaging that archive. It's giving us a listing of the file names. And then we also have this driver.bash script, right? So the nice thing about this driver bash script is it tells us all the things that need to be run. The downside of this bash script though, is it doesn't tell us whether or not things actually need to be run, right? And so, um, you know, this, this script that extracts the file names doesn't need to be run if we haven't downloaded a new version of GHCND all target GZ, right? And so this doesn't keep track of our dependencies. And we can imagine that over the next, you know, seven to 10 episodes here, this driver script might get longer and longer, and we might have more and more dependencies between the different files and the different scripts. And so what we're gonna do in the next episode is learn a new tool that's a lot like a tool I've used in the past called Make, but we're gonna use something new, and that's gonna be called Snake Make. And that will make it really straightforward to keep track of all the dependencies that we need to get a final output of our drought indices shown as a map uh, on a PNG file up on a website. And so doing this within SnakeMake, with Conda, with Git, with all these tools coming together will really help to make a reproducible workflow that again, we can run every day. So be sure to check out the video that I've got linked over here that will show you exactly how we do that in this next episode. Keep practicing with this and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.